So I want to see all you guys today. That's my favorite kind of day. We start the day breathing first. You're calm and relaxed. Your mind is calm. You've sent out all the impure energy and you're feeling good and relaxed. And then you try to solve all the world's problems in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Do we resolve them? 60%? Okay. 20%? <laughs> so, um, yeah, lots of interesting things. Uh, this is my favorite kind of lecture, that's when you, when you get to the core first, you get to the main, the main core, which is breathing. So, you can branch out from there, but we should, uh, anyway, everything starts from breathing. It starts from finding our mind frame, start, start from finding our center point. So if we're there on our center point, then we can branch out and, and solve things as we solve ourselves and stuff like that. So today's more about uh, starting from the root, which is inside of us. Resolving things we have inside and going outward. One of the main points about Tantra breathing is you have to root yourself. So you're planting the tree of yourself. And you have to root that deep inside. So to do that, you have to lie down. And the hardest point about lying down is you have to bring all your thoughts from here all the way down. And all your emotions from here all the way down. So when you lie down, obviously, nothing comes out. <laughs> so all your thoughts want to go up here, so... At first, it's very hard to breathe. You may feel a little bit something there, but you're not feeling much power there. And so, you may want to sit up, because sitting up is more comfortable, but you don't have the power there until this is rooted. But breathing is very frustrating, because there's no power here in the beginning. <laughs> so, um, in that sense, you have to lie down to get the power. Um, a little uncomfortable. And that's one of the reasons why, when this came to the West a long time ago, in the East too, is they want to teach it very quickly because people want to feel something. So when you sit down, you feel something right away. When you lie down, oh, I don't feel that much. So then people are unsure of it, and they say, oh, breathing is nothing, and they walk away. So because of that feeling, they wanted people to feel something right away, so they started introducing Tai Chi or something like that, so you can feel energy. It's easy when you do this, you can feel the energy very quickly. Or when you sit up, you can feel energy very quickly. But... Um, when you lie down, it takes a little bit more time. Once you finally got some energy here, then it's like an amazing power. Because everything is in breathing. So everything about breathing is to balance you, but to balance you, that means it detoxifies you. Everything inside comes out. So it's a very, very emotional process. So some people in the process, they want to run away, and they do run away. But in the end, you can never run away from yourself, right? So you'll, you'll just find another method to try to, to confront yourself. But fundamentally, you are made of energy. And breathing is energy. So breathing is what fundamentally is changing your energy to a pure sense of state. So um, it, it's a comprehensive system of facing everything inside of you. So when you need to cry, you cry. When you need to yell, you yell. You get it all out. So it's a beautiful process, but sometimes it can be hard. Um, so and then we all understand. And if you need space, then just take some space. You know? But that's an understanding process. So beautiful. So some opening thoughts about that. That's your dungeon there. The dungeon, as I said before, it's your gut. So it's where everything starts from. It's where a baby breathes from. So if you watch these little babies that come out, like yesterday. Um, what do you call There's That's where it's breathing from, right there. It's dungeon, it's gut. So all of you breathe from there. So, so, you can't say, I don't know about it, because all of you know about it. <laughs> That's where all of you started from. That's the breathing part. We all start from the gut. How did you stop? What's that? How did you stop? We didn't gut? stop. It's because that's such a united and balanced state. You don't evolve so well. You don't evolve quickly in that state. The reason we came to there is because it's completely imbalanced. It's 50% good and 50% bad. So depending on what you're going to choose every day, you evolve. And you also have, you know, your body type is unbalanced, right? You know, your horoscope is imbalanced. So you're born perfectly imbalanced at birth. So you evolve through that. So your breathing starts to rise from here up to here, and you start to feel these imbalances all the time. Wow, I'm happy, but I have this weakness. So depending on how you want to choose at every moment, you're evolving very rapidly. In the face of, but there are so many evil people on the earth, and so many bad corporations, well, what's your response to that? Do you respond in a negative way, or do you say, well, anyway, that's their course, so I'm going to take my course? Depending on what you choose at every moment. I was saying people like to protest many things. Let's protest this. But when you protest something, you just create more of that energy. So in fact, even though there's evil in the world, Richard just said, well, that's the course they're going to go. And you go your course. You choose the positive course, and you just go that. So instead of protesting nuclear energy, you just 
choose alternative energy and you do it. There's no reason to protest that. Let them go their road and you choose the good road and people follow you. That's the evolutionary course we're supposed to go. But we're so angry we want to protest. But in fact, it's not such a good cause. It just creates more of it. You can read the law of attraction or the books or something. It's all basic. But So that's why we're here. We're here to evolve and we evolve through our imbalances. So that's why we don't have our breathing. But once you evolve to a certain stage where your consciousness awakens, then they say, now you can return back. That's what breathing is about, or tangent breathing is about. There are all kinds of other breathings, but they're still up here. So they're still at stages. So they still have to get down here. That's what tangent breathing is, getting it down. But then, because it has, you have to unravel everything you've been through in your entire life to get back down to here, and then it comes a question for you. Are you ready to unravel everything in your life? So that's why it's not an easy process. And that's why many people fail along the process. Because yes, you're evolved enough where you can reach a stage where you can find out breathing exists. Because not everyone knows about breathing exists. So you have to be evolved enough to realize that breathing is out there. But then to be able to go that step even down is another quest. So everything is just an evolutionary step. Because the line, the little line gets thinner and thinner that you walk on. So... Can you feel a little bit about the importance of breathing, why breathing is important, and what it means? So it's getting back down to this balance point. If this is the exact center of your body, it means if you can get your thinking here, how's your thinking going to be? Far more balanced, right? I say even if you don't breathe, just when you have a question, just say, what should I do? This is your intuition, right? This is your universe inside of you. It's your balance point. So even just by doing this, a natural intuition will just come automatically, even if you don't breathe. So just teach people gut power, <laughs> you know, just here, because that's your gut power. So if, and if your emotions are all over the place, but if you can get your emotional content down to here, how are you going to be? Far more balanced in your emotions as well. Instead of saying, God damn it, why did he do that? You'll say, oh, that's interesting. So he's got that kind of imbalance in his life, and so he's got no fire energy, so he gets angry all the time. That's interesting. Rather than, why the hell is he such an idiot? Do you see the difference? So it's because your, your balance is here, and you're seeing things from the universe point of view, from a much wider, broader point of view, not just going from the close-up view, he's an idiot and he speaks loudly. <laughs> So you respond in a much wider, much broader, much more comprehensive view from the universe point of view, which is the danger. So we have the, all of us have the universe inside of us. The question is, where is it? So we all, yes, we're all the universe great, but if you don't know where it is, it's no use to you. <laughs> it's just information. So you have to find out where it is. So all of it's inside of you. The beautiful thing about this is, you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> it's inside of all of you. So we show you the method, but you do the breathing, you do the unraveling, you do the awakening. It's all inside of you. That's why I came to breathing. Because I was so tired of listening to someone talk for hours and hours saying, but well, how do you feel that? So how do you get that? And they didn't have a method for that. But that's the beautiful about breathing is this is the method for you to find those answers. Are you interested in breathing? <laughs> so there are three kinds of breathings. As I said, a, brave, a baby will breathe from its guts, and in Sanjim, it will rise up to do chest breathing at an energetic level. So we can evolve through the imbalances. And if you end up doing some type of singing, or some kind of yoga, or some kind of breath work, then you don't do anything down here, which is called the abdomen. So abdomen breathing is very great for health. You, you, you're actually pulling in far more oxygen here than you're doing there. So the weakest breathers are just the sports athletes doing the, the machines and running all the time. It's great, but there's not much oxygen coming into the body. But the muscles are being very well developed. <laughs> but to improve the oxygen content, you need to be breathing here. Some kind of breathing form. So there are many different breath works you know about that. But the thing about this kind of breathing is there's no accumulation of energy. Energy is not accumulated anywhere. There's no energy vessel, there's no energy container, there's nothing that contains energy. So energy, is, energy just works in this area, and then when you're done with your breath work, or your yoga work, or your tai chi work, then it all just flies away. But if you've gotten to some kind of system to learn about um, the dungeon, 
then the dungeon is a place where you accumulate energy. Is it, does it have anything to do with Kundalini? I, Kundalini talks, as I know, about the spine and how it rolls up. So they must have some kind of form of energy gathering there, I'm sure. I'm sure they do. Um, it's probably connecting point. Uh, but it's not a chakra point. So, as I said, as I, as I know, the yoga system, the Chinese system, the Korean system, all are based on three aspects. The original teachings, not how it was brought to the West. When it was brought to the West, they had to change it so much because people couldn't understand it. So yoga is not actually yoga. Yoga is actually a system of meditation. But when it's brought to us, it just became exercising at home. <laughs> but actually, yoga in the East is actually the same system as all meditation. You must exercise because you must clean the body of impure energy, and you must stretch. Secondly, you do some kind of posture meditation to open up the inner vessels of the body. Then, you lie down and do breathing. And then you do sitting meditation. So yoga has that as well too, but it's just you have to you have to find some school in India will teach it to you, <laughs> or maybe one of the teachers here or somebody. In general, the way it's just taught in a yoga class, they just do it just for health, because people aren't so interested in the actual deeper aspect. So I'm sure the Kundalini schools they would know about it, but it's not a chakra system. More fundamental than chakra systems is the energy domain system. So there are three energy domains, and that's what we're looking at. So in China, they know about this. So. Um, a lot of the Tai Chi masters online, they will know about that. They will know about the dungeon, and maybe the masters will know how to utilize it. But in general, how they teach it to, the, to their trainees, you know, they never teach like how to really use the dungeon, how to accumulate energy. They teach how to, how to send the energy around, and then they say, go home. I've rarely met anyone who learned how to lie down and do dungeon reading in a Tai Chi class. Very few of them. Literally, out of thousands of people, one or two I met who actually Say, ah, my Tai Chi teacher told me to lie down and breathe. Well, like, oh, he knew something, you know? So there are people who know, so, but in general, no. But in, in the East, too, it's all about secrecy, too. It's kind of like the one master who knows something, you know, will not tell their disciples. So the one master will know how to breathe, but will not tell people. That kind of stuff exists.